All right, good afternoon, evening, everyone, morning, wherever you are in this fine Saturday, whatever day it is. Uh, <laughs> TGT Media is an entertainment history interview show where we interview the creative people from the internet in the comic, film, TV, music, and video game industries. Of course, I'm your host, Kurt. We are on uh, episode two, 313 right now. I always get those confused. And we are joined today by a very talented comic book artist, uh, joining today from his uh, either very first creation called Skyward Comic. We are joined today by Jeremy Dale. How are you doing today, Jeremy? I'm doing great. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Anytime, anytime. I'm always love having a person that's been in the industry a while, uh, done some many great uh, works in the past with G.I. Joe, uh, along with many other aspects. Um mm-hmm. But starting off here, you know, what what is Skyward all about? Because I've I've read Skyward the the very first issue, and I'm I'm intrigued by it. I'm really uh, excited about it. Oh, that's awesome! That's great to hear. Uh, Skyward's my new creator-owned fantasy adventure series. It's about a group of people that come together to fend off against the impending invasion of their homeland. It's an all-ages action fantasy. So if you like things like you know, obviously like Telos or Bone, the Studio Ghibli films, things like that, it's going to be right up your alley. Awesome, good stuff. Now. Being that you've worked on other projects in the past that are not your own creative content, mm-hmm. um, why did you want to do Skyward then? <laughs> Precisely because I've done others, <laughs> things like that. You know, I've been doing you know a lot of license work over the past several years. You know, from GI Joe to the Marvel video game Marvel Kapow, you know, things like that for the last several years. And so I kind of got the itch to do my own creator own book again, and that's where Skyward came from. I saw that there was a real lack of a I don't know, an approachable all-ages fantasy that could be used and to get just about anybody mainstream into the industry or, you know, just bring back readers for that matter. And so seeing that, I decided to develop Skyward. Do you find that there, besides, like you said, there's a serious lack of all-ages fantasy comics, though, was this something like kind of in the back of your head that was gnawing on, on ideas of possible uh, stories that you wanted to write? Oh, absolutely. Uh, in fact, the first Skyward images I ever drew were during my time on G.I. Joe. <laughs> I, while I was working on the license books, you know, drawing Cobra Commander and Destro and all, the, all those guys, I would be, you know, doodling these little fantasy images in my head and having fun coming up with, you know, backstories and things like that. So when I got the opportunity to take on the book, I, I jumped at it. Nice. And uh, you're working with, um, is it Action Press? Is it Action Lab. Action, Action Lab. Lab. Right. Great guys over there. Yeah, I, I've, I've heard a bit about them. I'm glad that they're taking uh, Skyward under their, their proverbial book wing, so to speak, and uh, yeah. <laughs> really help <laughs> you, really help you out. Now, now this is going to be a graphic novel. This isn't going to be a web presence. This is going to be, it's going to be a comic book as well as, you know, digital comic, things like that as well. It's going to be just about everything you can imagine. The more venues you can get it out there, the better, right? Comicsology and the whole bit. like Exactly. That. Comicsology, uh, comics, uh, comic comics users. press. Yeah, all of that. Nice, nice. Good stuff. We'll talk about some of your characters here because, you know, the... The young boy that, and I'm not going to spoil it, but the young boy goes through a traumatic experience because, um, you know, well, he, he has to set his path, his tail. Uh, first off, let, let's get the boy's name and, and why did you want to create him in, in this particular image? Well, Quinn's our everyman. Quinn's the guy that's going to be taking us through this weird, fantastic world around him. And from his He's a very young boy who was brought up in the middle of the forest in a very normal kind of, you know, secluded life. And he didn't really get a good picture of what the world would be like outside of that. And unfortunately, there's this event that leads him out and leads him out into this this bigger world around him. And along the way, he finds that there's weird, fantastic creatures. There's these amazing peoples. There's It's just a very diverse, you know, landscape for him to uh, explore. And that's Quinn. <laughs> and um, it almost reminded me a bit of how, uh, pardon the, the comparison, Batman started in the essence where, you know, <laughs> it's just <laughs> Well, like, it is. It's the, it's the classic hero's trope. The hero's trope where, you know, something has to happen to be a catalyst to kind of push him forward into an all-new world. What about writing this type of, of book here? Because I, I'm, I'm not familiar. Are you are you both a, an artist and a writer? Are you the author? Yes, the author? yes. Awesome. I, I'm the artist and the writer of this book, yeah. Nice. So, so then writing this type of, of book, though, uh, I've said, I don't think it's a real big change from what you're used to doing, but, but kind of go through your process as to 
you're thinking of, of the next few books that you're going to put out for this series. Well, and especially with Skyward, I want to make sure it stays fresh. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that, you know, especially at the beginning, may seem a little bit cliche to those that are used to reading, you know, fantasy tropes and things like that. But with Skyward, I'm, I'm just trying to keep it so that you're constantly guessing, you're constantly on your toes, you don't know what's coming next. By the time you hit the end of issue three, you're completely befuddled, you have no idea where it's going from there. And I think you'll be surprised you've read, say, issue one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think you'll be possibly surprised just for how issue two starts. There's a much larger cast out there. And uh, one thing I was telling somebody earlier was uh, that Quinn and his dog Jack are, aren't so much they are the main characters as much as they are, say, the R2-D2 and C-3PO <laughs> series. They introduce us to the larger concepts and characters around them. Mm -hmm. Then uh, world building, obviously, is something very important when it comes to a huge fantasy oh, world yeah. that you have here. No, what are some of your, your thoughts into building a world from scratch? Well, first, you want to make sure that it feels like it's a full living world. With Skyward, I wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, the backgrounds lived. They weren't just, you know, a, a static building or a static tree or the same thing over and over again. Now, mind you, the first few issues do take place heavily in the woods, <laughs> but, it, but I am trying to, you know, mix it up and make sure each area of the woods looks like its own separate part, uh, its own little cohesive unity, its environment of its own. With, with a book like this, you have to make sure that each character has their own purpose. You want to make sure that each character has their own, you know, that they have their own path as well. So that they, they travel along the road with you. If, if they're not doing that, then you're not doing your job as a writer, really. <laughs> well, you could toss in the occasional rock, you know, just to see <laughs> yeah. Does. yeah, we'll put in a rock here. That'll look good. <laughs> we, we can spare the expense. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no rocks were harmed in the making of the background. Um, oh, froze there for a second. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. That's strange. It happens. Um, you know, continuing on here, uh, obviously, like there's the C3PO and R2D2 of, the, of your your world. Mm -hmm. um, you know, who who's the Luke, or, or are we going to see the Luke and the Leia and all that other stuff? Oh, story. absolutely. Absolutely. The, the, the cast of characters was designed specifically so that they'd have, you know, some aspect to add to the plot, something to add to the overarching, you know, um, just the grand master plan of where I want to go. I have it plotted through issue 18 at the moment and it just continues to go through there. I'm currently drawing issue six. I'm really enjoying it. It's hard for me not to spoil every last little thing. That, uh, that I'm doing right now while I'm talking to this. And in fact, I have to keep referring back during, you know, let's say an interview or things like that uh, to make sure that I'm not spoiling things because I forget exactly where everybody else is at the moment. You could occasionally let something slip and it'd be like, uh, can... I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, <laughs> cookies. That's what I meant. Yes. 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 <laughs> talk, talk about the, um, you know, working with, uh, Kelly, who is also the editor of this book, mm -hmm. uh, part of the wife or yeah, she's my wife. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to make sure about that because oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, when, when she brought this up, I, I got an email from her. You know, she was really mm -hmm. excited. Like I could tell. Usually with email, you get the the verbose. You know, oh, well, the, it's about yeah. this book, this book. She was I, like reading the email. She was very excited about the book. Like she was like, I could read it in the text. It was like it was. It actually drew me to to start looking into this here. I um, knew there was a reason I married her. <laughs> the, the, the funny emails. Um, <laughs> exactly. Keeps us going. What about her uh, her approach when it comes to this type of book here? Obviously, you know she she is your. Mm -hmm. significant other when it comes to this particular book but doesn't she have to take kind of like that step back and say oh well you know let's you know, how does that work in a you know i brought kelly on board uh especially because i needed to make sure i was making the times it's not that i have a trouble making a deadline it's just i work better when i know there is a deadline and also there's a, so much more that goes into making say a comic book than just drawing and writing it you know, the marketing angle or making sure the cover artists or the colorists or the letterers are all staying on time and staying informed. These are all things that took tremendous time out of my day every day. And after answering, I don't know, 50 to 150 emails a day, I, I was getting tired of doing that every single day. And so I asked her if she could help out a little bit here and there. And she's also great as a sounding board. She's helped me out with several of the, the concerns I've had about the plot or character. And she's been really good about, you know, really just 
just making sure that I'm staying excited about the whole project in general. She's been great for that. <laughs> and supportive too. That's the only exactly, thing. exactly. <laughs> Because if she watches this, you know, at least she'll say, hey, he gave me a good word. <laughs> exactly. I love you, dear. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm going to take a step back, kind of go a little more philosophical in this route here, because I sure. am doing a documentary film called Little Person Among Media Giant. Um, and, you know, I kind of want to go into your, your inner psyche when it comes to the comic itself, or rather yeah. just yourself as a person, I should say. Um Starting off, you know, who were who were some of your inspirations, you know, getting on your path to where you are now? Well, obviously, um, <clears throat> my parents were a big part of this. My dad ran a comic shop when I was a, a young kid, right. uh, I guess in the late 80s, early 90s, or throughout the 80s and some of the 90s. Uh, <clears throat> so when he had that comic shop, I got to read, you know, comics from all different generations. I got to read, you know, your Will Eisner's, your Jack Kirby's, your John Burns and George Perez's, all of that. And that really, I think, helped me inform what I wanted to become later when I started creating my own books. So those guys automatically. Uh, most importantly for a book like this, Bill Watterson was a big, big influence on me. As I said earlier, the, the uh, Hayao Miyazaki uh, Studio Ghibli films were fantastic inspirations. And I wish there were more books that were doing things like that because the kind of landscapes he builds, the worlds are just fully formed uh, from the first moment you see those films. And if I can do even a little bit of that or just evoke some of that, then I'm doing my job. Do you consider sex, the, <clears throat> take two. Do you consider yourself successful? Uh, remotely. I mean, I think you talk to just about any artist or creator in this industry and you're going to get probably the same answer. Uh, I know that, uh, you talk to guys like Adam Hughes and they're not happy with their work. So I guess I can't be expected <laughs> to truly love my work. I think if you love your work too much that you're probably going to stagnate as an artist or a creator, you want to find ways to improve. You want to always be seeking out the next thing and seeking out the next kind of uh, the angle or technique or whatever you can do to increase your talent. And so, yeah, I'm, I guess I'm somewhat happy with what I'm doing. There's, there's times when I draw something I'm like, okay, I can look back on that tomorrow and I'll still like it. But I'd say most of the time I'm like, all, the only thing I'll see are the, the, are the mistakes, the errors, the things that uh, immediately point out to me, okay, I could have made the storytelling clearer here, or I could have done this differently, or the transition could work differently, or whatever, what have you. Then how do you deal with your failures? Uh, one step at a time, one page at a time. Uh, it's a deadline-centric industry, and that helps a lot, and it tells you that you have to keep producing stuff if you want to keep getting jobs, if you want to still you know, bring in income. So because of those deadlines, you have to just put it away at the end of the day, just say, okay, this page is done, I'll try and improve next time. If you keep noodling that same page and erasing and erasing over and over, you're never going to get anywhere. You need to get onto that next page because the deadline is there. It's still, the time is still ticking. So you need to be able to keep pushing on. And anytime I see a mistake, I'm like, I got to work on that. I got to work on that. Do you have like the, the binder full of mistakes you can correct type feel? Oh, yeah. Actually, I've, <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a binder right here of things that I'm working with. Huge, thick binder of things and elements and characters and things that I need to, to keep working on and keep developing. What about the, the next generation coming through? We'll talk about your convention season, uh, convention aspects in a second, but yeah. when it comes to the, the younger generation coming up, obviously, you know, they look to yourself as inspirations, but uh, how can they inspire the next generation? I think they can inspire just by buying the kind of books that they like. Um, <clears throat> with Skyward, I'm, I'm hoping to bring in the new generation. I'm hoping to bring in guys that are more, you know, guys and girls, I should say. <laughs> Any gender is fine, honestly. Obviously, I was just using that as a blanket. Uh, by, I've been trying to bring in people that are more interested in, say, in the video game aspect. You know, people that play video games, because it's a large market, and it's right up our alley. It's right next door. It's like our, it's like our close cousins, and we should be appealing more to them. And uh, I think with, with uh, you know, this book especially, I'm trying to add little elements that they'll say, oh, yeah, that reminds me of this, or that reminds me of that, that, that thing I love so much. <laughs> And I think the way that they can inspire the next, you know, the next generation is simply by, you know, telling people, expressing it. When they like something, send them a letter, send them an email, or just express it on a forum somewhere because most of us creators, we're going to find it. We're looking for feedback. We work in a vacuum. We work in a very small space. And the only feedback we get is online. 
typically, or at a show, at like a convention or a signing. Well, talk about conventions then, because um, uh, you know when it comes to your uh, your conventions, going to these cons, you know, you're you're, mm-hmm. you're doing your commissions, you're doing your signings, everything like that. How's the fan interaction been for you personally? Honestly, I think especially in person, I think it's universally positive. Uh, you know, online, obviously, you're going to get a lot of the haters and the trolls, and especially during my G.I. Joe run, it was hard to go online for a while. <laughs> but uh, I would say that in person, those are the people that are absolutely passionate about what you're doing or what they're looking for, what they're excited about. That's why they're there. They paid 20 some dollars to get a ticket. Now they want to go in there and just feel the excitement, you know, get riled up. And uh, at shows, I find it really, really energizing to see just the level of uh, excitement and passion, like I said, that they're, uh, that they're expressing. They're, they're really excited about the product, and they're looking for new things to excite them more. And that's awesome. That's great to see. How do you stay excited, then, doing your job? I stay excited by, one, doing conventions and shows, uh, and always trying to find interesting things to do, because there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of work in this industry that you can get, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, there's a lot of work that you can get that isn't as exciting. There's a lot of, like I would say, I, I tell this occasionally, uh, I would say 90% of the emails I get about working on new projects are from new writers or from somewhat established writers that want to work on a post-apocalyptic zombie book. And I've done like six of those at this point. I'm kind of tired of it. That's another reason I did Skyward, to do something a little bit more lighthearted, a lot more along the lines of what I want to do. Uh, is something that you know is approachable as, as opposed to just everything has to be dark and depressing all the time. I like it when people are excited, when they're smiling. When a hero is smiling, then you know. I mean, they have superpowers, most of these guys in comics, right? If you have a superpower, how could you be frowning all the time? That's why Batman's frowning. That's why Batman's frowning. I'll tell you. He's always but, in the he's always in the dark. Why doesn't he get like you know a tea party set up? Exactly. <laughs> Joy, you're rich. <laughs> oh no, I have to hold on to that brooding aspect, or my bat powers will. Disappear. Oh no, I. Exactly. I have a really developed backstory and family. They all love me. Wah. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> at least, at least Alfred uh, understands me. Oh wait, he's is he dead in this <laughs> issue? I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Um, we'll talk about some some people that kind of gave you some some inspirational advice then as you were working throughout your career. You know, one of the nice things about comics in the creator community is that nearly everybody is very open and understanding and they want to help you get to that next level they want to help you you know achieve that dream that you're looking for so there's a huge kind of not really official but it's like unspoken you know uh support group amongst people amongst the creators or upcoming creators i know in atlanta alone and i know this is rare but uh here in atlanta where i live there are dozens and dozens of top-notch comic book creators from Adam Hughes to Coley Hamner, Laura Martin, Brian Stelfreeze, the whole Gaijin Studios crew of old, you know, all those guys are here. We also have the animation guys at Cartoon Network and Adult Swim are here. Awesome. And along the way, you're going to get a lot of kids from, you know, out of art school, say SCAD is down here, or you get a lot of guys that are just looking for, you know, how do I get to that next level? How do I get to where you are, say, and uh, we're all really open about it. Typically, we want to help if we can, whether that's tips, critiques, whatever it may be. Have you personally mentored? I guess mentoring would be the proper word for this mm-hmm. as well. Have you personally mentored anyone that has broken into the industry? Personally, not as much. I would say that it's it's a lot more um, the casual aspect with me. I haven't had a chance to have like the intern yet <laughs> that some of these guys have had uh, in town. And... Uh, Though online, there's a there's a forum called Pencil Jack. That's an online forum for primarily comic book illustrators, and I've been on there since 1998, 1997. And that entire website is populated by guys just looking for the, to you know how do I improve to get to that next level to become a professional illustrator. And I would say about three dozen or so guys have gone pro from that website. Whether it's Robert Kirkman, 
who started at, uh, you know, Pencil Jack or Corey Walker, you know, Ryan Otley, you know, a lot of his crew, Tony Moore. Mm -hmm. There was me, there's Robert Atkins from G.I. Joe and others like that. Just a huge list. Kari Randolph, he's incredible. Yeah, a lot of guys that have gone pro. And I've helped out a lot there by giving, you know, good critiques or just trying to be there and give them business advice, which is something they really should teach. <laughs> Uh, creators in the industry is that's the one angle no one's teaching at say an art school is uh you know how to do your taxes properly because the irs will come after you if you don't do the right or uh you know how to keep yourself from going under you know how to you know keep projects going how to keep you know business coming in that kind of stuff do you find that uh with the advent of the crowdsourcing everything like that the kickstarters indiegogos all that other fun stuff mm -hmm. uh you know, uh, would you approach that angle for, say, funding a book for, say, Skyward? I've considered it. I've considered it in the past. Uh, I haven't done it yet. Uh, I have considered it because creator-owned is a really rough ride, and I'm, I'm paying my letter and colorist out of my own pockets. Um, it's not like Marvel or DC where they're handling the, the risk factor of it. it you know, on creator-owned, you're handling it all yourself. It's either people are donating their time or you're paying them. And so that's a really rough angle, and that's probably why I would start a Kickstarter, say, or an Indiegogo, as you said, hmm. is be to try and help pay some of those expenses. Because I've got the publisher now. The publisher is now taking care of the initial cost of printing. So that helps out tremendously. <laughs> but uh, you know, paying the colorist, that's another thing entirely. Would I? Yes. Have I? Not yet. Okay. Then is there, um, well, we're we're coming towards the end of our interview here, and it's been actually very entertaining. I'm I'm always enjoying this as well. <laughs> thank, thank you're, you're a funny guy. I like it. Um, I get that. <laughs> when it comes to uh, the spoiler alert, oh, holy, geez, I can't talk today. Uh, <laughs> sorry, can you hang on a second? Sure. Yes. And here I thought I wasn't going to have to edit anything. <laughs> no such luck. It happens, it happens. <laughs> um, spoiler, alert, spoiler alert segment. Really, I figure I've been saying this for five years. I'd be able to say that simple word. I mean, come on! <laughs> Professionalism. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> overrated. Um, when it comes to a, a little teaser or something like that for the, uh, the the watchers and readers of your work, uh, what do you have that are kind of like dangle that carrot in front of us, so to speak, when it comes to Skyward? Sure, uh, absolutely. Right off the bat, war is coming. I'm building <laughs> a big, gigantic battle that's going to be happening, I'd say, around issue seven or eight or so. And uh, which is right after I finish drawing this issue. <laughs> so it's really soon for me. But uh, war is coming, and there's going to be heavy casualties, and there's going to be a lot of change that happens to the book, and a few huge surprises for people that have been following since the beginning. Nice. That's good stuff. Um, is there anything that I haven't asked you about that you'd love for everyone to, to know about, uh, either about the comic, about yourself, anything that you want to plug? Uh, no. Oh, you know what? I'm a natural brunette. <laughs> There you go. Uh, other than that, no, I think I'm pretty good. My website's jeremydale.com, jeremy-dale.com. And uh, Action Labs? Uh, and Action is, Lab is the publisher, yeah. And actionlabs.com or mm -hmm. whatever. It's, awesome. it's Action Lab, yeah, I think it's actionlab.com. Awesome. Good support. And they put out a great line of, uh, of uh, you know, all ages stuff as well as adult fantasy in their, in their uh, danger zone line but they the all ages stuff they do like uh princeless and molly danger by jamal eigel mm -hmm. just fantastic just fantastic books i'm really proud to be a part of it awesome well hey jeremy thank you so much for, for taking thank the time you. to do this and um I just want to say, you know, I look forward to, to Skyward, the, the series. I know people watching this and, and listening to the show on iTunes will, will be happy to, to grab it any way, shape, or form. Uh, what cons are you going to this year? Uh, For the rest of the year, let me see, I have Comic Con in San Diego coming up in a few weeks now. <laughs> uh, yeah. After that, I have Baltimore. 
Uh, Baltimore Comic Con, Dragon Con, nice. attending a show called Comic Book City Con in Greensboro, North Carolina. The the comic shop there, Acme Comics, is a fantastic retailer, and uh, they've really developed a real huge community of fans in the community. Like you would not believe, their free comic book day is thousands of people showing up up to as early as noon the day before to line <laughs> oh, up. They have shit. tents. It's crazy. It's, it's, it's just amazing what they've been able to build. And they have their first show, show this year, their first convention. Nice. And so I'm going to be there for that. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, other than that, New York Comic Con and you know the typical, the usual suspects. <laughs> I usually try to have my convention information listed on my website. In fact, I'm getting ready to put up my signing schedule. I'm doing a signing tour uh, in... Let me see, late July, early August, starting around there. And that's going to be going all the way through the East Coast, the Midwest, and beyond. So it's going to be everywhere. Awesome. Good stuff. <laughs> well, you got to come up Canada way, you know, up north. Yeah. You know, I've done a couple shows there. The Fan Expo Toronto show is yeah. fantastic. Uh, I'd like to do a couple more. I've heard some good things. Yeah, I'll, I'll be there this uh, this August for Fan Expo Toronto as well. Very so, cool. Uh, that's going to be fun. All right. Well, I will let you go. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. And I hope that... Uh, you know, check out Skyward, check out uh, Jeremy Dale's work on jeremydale.com, as well as Action Labs, the publisher of this fine, wonderful novel, graphic, comic book, uh, extraordinary. Comic book, celebrate the industry. Comic. Yes. <laughs> comic first. <laughs> awesome. And uh, tune in next episode for another great interview with uh, someone else that I can't think of at the moment, but it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> and we're done. Good. Thank you, thank you. We thank are, you, we that was a lot of fun. Set. Oh, good, good.